So welcome to part four. So at the end of this part of this lecture, you guys should be able to organize the various etiologies of hypopituitarism. Okay. So we'll talk about hypopituitarism, its causes, its symptoms, and treatment. So hypopituitarism has several etiologies. It could be developmental or structural, even traumatic, especially if you have trauma, trauma early at the during development, you can have marked physical manifestations, neoplastic, infiltrative, inflammatory, vascular, and infections. The causes of um, hypopituitarism due to developmental causes are following. You have your Kalman, you have your bardet bidel leptin and leptin reception mutation, as well as your prader willi syndrome. So prader willi syndrome is the most common cause of systemic obesity. No? Obesity not just by overeating, but because of uh, intrinsic um, uh, hypothalamic defect causing hyperphagia. Anyway, we'll focus more on Kalman syndrome because I think this is a, a must-know for, for medical students, although this is not a very common condition, but at least you understand what Kalman syndrome is. So Kalman syndrome is a rare genetic disorder characterized by delayed or absent puberty. So it affects mostly males. And it's first described by Kalman and Schoenfeld in 1944, affects males four times more frequently than females. These factors will include a positive family history. This caused by inability to produce hormones for sexual maturation. So symptoms are impaired sleep or anosmia, a small penis, undescended test, and other manifestation of um, hypogonadism. So you will have, um, because of the lack of Hormones for sex maturation, so sex steroid hormones, you can lack secondary sexual characteristics, not the late puberty in both males and females. Some patients, some patients, not all, can have um, physical defects such as cleft lip, cleft palate. And usually it's diagnosed by genetic karyotyping and treated by hormone replacement therapy. So Kalman syndrome is a condition where there is failure of the gene or its neurons to migrate properly into the hypothalamus. So normally, you know, during the develop, embryologic development, the, the GNR its neurons or the neurons that are capable of secreting GNRH originate from your olfactory plaque and they travel in your olfactory neurons through your olfactory bulb until they reach the area of the hypothalamus during normal embryologic development. And once they reach the area of your hypothalamus, then they'll be able to now um, secrete in our age in order to stimulate your pituitary gland to secrete your gonadotrons. However, if there is any problem in the migration of your GNR is neuron from the olfactory, olfactory plaque code, the hypothalamus and your GNR, its neurons are not able to reach your hypothalamus, then you will have GNRH deficient. Okay? And usually, this can be due to um, mutations, gene mutations. No? Most of which is your Cal, Cal1 and your FGF R1 gene mutants that causes that uh, failure in the development and migration of gene RH neurons. So this is an actual patient of mine. Let's talk first to this uh, this patient. So this is an actual patient of mine taken with consent. Uh, what do you notice in the face? No. If you notice no, the, the the lack of beard, no, the lack of uh, facial hair, the pores are fine, no traces of acne. 
in the chest there are no chest hair and there's lack of muscle development here in this in the perineal area you can see a mightiness and the lack of a descended testes the lack of pubic hair okay so these are manifestations of your Calvin syndrome. So similarly, in this patient, what you also notice, no? because these are pictures of the close-up. If you can see, now this is a 15-year-old male. No? If you look at the testes, there's no um, uh, descended. You have the patient has an undescended testis, a small penis, no? um, the lack of chest hair and pubic hair. Maybe if the face is shown, you'll see that there's no facial hair, there's no acne. No? And you can see the arms are long, no? and the patient is very tall as well. No? This is because the lack of the sex steroid hormones, because your estrogen is important in the closure of your epiphyseal growth plate. So if there's lack of your steroid hormones, then your bones will continue to grow because of the delay in the closure of your epiphyseal growth plates. So this pain no, was um, very tall for his age. And uh, what I was telling about the long, long arm span compared to the, the, the height of the patient, that's your unicoid portion. And when this patient was given HCG, no, HCG acting like luteinizing hormone was actually able to induce the descent of your species into and became and now became palpable in the stool. You know? During the initial workup, the LH was very low, the FH was low as well, as well as because of the low LH and FSH, testosterone was low as well. And when the patient was given 100 micrograms, GNRH, it was able to increase the levels of your LH and FSH, showing us that this is actually primary hypogonadism or what we call hypogonadism, meaning it's a GNRH that is lacking. No, and because the GNRH is lacking, you have lacking gonadotropins as well. So, this is your hypogonadotropic meaning low GNRH level, hypogonadism, low gonadotropin level, low LH and FSH. Hypogonadotropic, hypogonadism, secondary to Kalman syndrome. So it could be from a defective Tal1 gene and it's usually X or an autosomal dominant form from an FGFR1 gene mutation. So because of the lack of GNRH, you have low LH, low FSH, therefore you have sex steroid hormones. Next, you have your ARD hypopituitarism. So I mentioned earlier to you the different causes. No? So the sequential order of hormone loss issue should starts with a growth hormone followed by FSH, LH, TSH, and EH. So if you have a patient with uh, you can suspect to have hypopituitarism. The patient already has adrenal insufficiency, no? meaning ACTH is already deficient. No? Most likely, you will also have hypothyroidism, hypogonadism, and growth hormone deficiency as well because of this known sequential order of hormone loss. Although this is not a um, hard and fast. It's just a guide so that you'll be able to check also the other hormones as well. So these are the different causes. So this is in your book. You can just read through this. You can have hypothalamic infertility disorders, inflammatory lesions, usually infectious, cranial irrigation. So for example, you um, have received radiation early in life or let's say a brain tumor for other causes. Not many years down the line, 5 to 15 years, you will be having hypopituitarism, no? And the, the loss, it follows the loss of um, the, the pattern of 
hormone loss. No? You can also have lymphocytic hypophysitis. This is an autoimmune um, disorder that usually develops after uh, delivery. Pituitary apoplexy. So pituitary apoplexy is acute intra-pituitary hemorrhagic vascular event. Usually, there's a sudden loss of uh, vascular supply of your pituitary causing an infarction. And it occurs spontaneously in a pre-existing pre adenoma or postpartum. Because usually during pregnancy, you know, the, the pituitary gland will increase so much in size and the blood supply will increase as well. And then during childbirth, and during childbirth, some women will develop massive blood loss um, requiring several packs of RBC to replace. And because of that sudden massive blood loss, it causes a sudden loss of blood supply to enlarge pituitary gland. And that sudden loss of so blood supply to the pituitary gland causes pituitary infarction. And that's what we call Sheehan syndrome. No? And she syndrome can manifest as an endocrine emergency. So usually endocrine emergency comes from acute adrenal insufficiency or even acute adrenal crisis resulting in severe hypoglycemia, hypotension shock, even CNS hemorrhage and death. So these are the findings. Emptycella is also a possible cause of acquired hypopituitarism, usually an incidental MRI finding that some patients can actually still have normal pituitary function. So this is an example of a large pituitary tumor with a snowman configuration. This tumor is slightly, uh, has marked enhancement with conscious and this tumor has not yet undergone apoplexy but compare it with this patient as you can see there is a pituitary sign with a washout inside the hemorrhagic the area of hemorrhage the, called the hemorrhagic blush in the center of the pituitary adenoma and this patient has undergone has had a pituitary ischemic apoplexy so there's a hyper intense and in uh hemorrhagic blush in the center as opposed to this one. So a patient with adult hypopituitarism, how do we replace? So we just replace the end organ, uh, the target bone that is lost. So for example, you have ACTH deficiency, you will have adrenal insufficiency. So what do we do? We replace the glucocorticoids. Okay, and PSH, no, if you lack PSH, you're unable to, you will have low T4, T3 levels, so you can replace levothyroxine in patients who have hypogonadism, low FSH, LH. You can have testosterone replacement, hormone replacement for females. For growth hormone deficiency, the patient is very symptomatic. You can give synthetic growth hormone injections. And for patients who have diabetes insipidus, you can give, due to the lack of vasopressin, you can give desmopressin. Okay? So some patients, they would only need um, levothyroxine. Or sometimes, some patients not decide pregnancy um, or don't have any problem with their libido or not desirous of having any so you can do away with doing testosterone replacement. So usually the most important ones that you to replace is this one. Your adrenal replacement and your thyroid hormone replacement. And in patients with diabetes insipidus, you are um, discussing. So that's the end of part four. So I hope given a patient with a... Uh, Hypopituitarism, you will be able to understand how it is being managed and how those hormones are being replaced. No? So, of course, I don't expect you as general practitioners to patients manage with hypopituitarism, but at least understand how it's managed by your subspace. 
So thank you and I'll see you in the part five. Okay? Bye.